why would you ever want to edit your photos in DaVinci Resolve? DaVinci Resolve is primarily a video editor. Now, as many of you know, Photoshop and Lightroom are the two programs that are primarily used to edit photos. I have a passion for filmmaking and photography, and I use a bunch of different tools to create my content. Since DaVinci Resolve is a video editor, I don't use it all the time to edit photos, but there is one thing that DaVinci Resolve does that Photoshop and Lightroom cannot do. And I'll get to that later in this video. But that is why today I'm going to show you how and why I sometimes use DaVinci Resolve to edit my photos. Let's talk about some project settings. Major shout out to my buddy, Chad Miller, who actually had some input on this as well. So make sure to give him a follow linked down in the description. After years of doing this, I have found there are two ways to approach this. The first way is to set up a dedicated project just for editing stills. The second way is if you wanna edit the photos within a video project. And depending on what your project settings are, will determine a few tweaks later down the node tree. And by the way, if you guys want the project file and the power grade that I'm gonna create, you can also download that linked down in the description that will basically just jumpstart your entire process into editing stills. Now, let us begin. If you're already in a project or if you just open up DaVinci Resolve, you wanna to go to the project manager. If you wanna create a dedicated project, you can just come down here to the right hand side and select new project and then select create. I've already done so, so I'm gonna go into that project. First thing you wanna do is come over here to the right-hand side under project settings and select the little cog. Right now, my timeline resolution is 1080 by 1920, and I'm using the vertical resolution. And the reason I'm selecting this for right now is because say, if you wanna edit a photo for Instagram, this is what you would wanna set it up as. Then under color management, personally for me, I like DaVinci wide gamut for my timeline color space, and your output color space should be sRGB. Next, what you wanna do is come down to your camera raw tab. Under the raw profile, you're going to wanna select cinema DNG, then select decode using the project. And then here you wanna make sure that your color space is black magic design and your gamma is black magic design film. I also turn on highlight recovery and I turn the sharpness all the way down, then select save. So right now we have a vertical timeline, but I've also created a horizontal timeline. So if you wanna create a horizontal timeline, you can come up here to the file and select new timeline. Then select use project settings and you wanna select format. Then you can put in whatever resolution that you want. So if you wanna select a custom resolution to edit your entire photo, you're more than welcome to do that. But for right now, I'm just using the 1080 by 1920. I'm also not using the vertical resolution. And then I would select create. Then what I've done here is I've renamed these timelines. So if you wanna right click on the first one, make it vertical and then right click and rename this one to be horizontal. Do that if you wanna be more organized. If you are wanting to edit photos within a video, you will want to come down here to the right hand side, select project settings again, and then select color management. And the only thing that I would suggest is for your output color space, make it Rec. 709 2.4, then click save. For this part of the tutorial, I'm using the dedicated project on the vertical timeline. Now, if you've noticed, if you try to drag in a raw file, DaVinci Resolve will not recognize it. If you don't have Lightroom, what you can do is go to Adobe's website and download Adobe DNG Converter. I will leave a link down in the description. Once you've downloaded it, what you'll first wanna do is come over to your photos and create a new folder. And I'm just gonna name it DNG and then put whatever photos you want to convert to DNG in that folder. Then come over here to the Adobe DNG converter and select the folder that you wanna convert the raw files. So go ahead and just drag that folder into this window, select that folder. Then you wanna select the location to where you're gonna save these files. So I'm just gonna click and drag the exact same folder into this window and then click select. Then select convert. I've only converted one photo. So with that one photo converted, I'm going to quit out of Adobe DNG Converter and then drag this into the window. Now, as you can see, it needs a bit of adjustments. The first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to the right-hand side and change the rotation angle to 90 degrees. I've made an adjustment clip with the rule of thirds. So I'm just going to make sure that I center up this photo the way I like it and then turn off the adjustment clip. 
Now, the reason I had us set up in the project settings in the camera raw tab to make the project settings like this is because in the color tab, it will automatically do the camera raw adjustments for the stills. So with that said, over here on the right hand side in our node tree, let's go ahead and add a CST. Put the color space transform on that first node. And what we want to do is use from what it's debayered at to match what our project settings are. Now for the input color space, you can use any of these Blackmagic design film gens. I personally like the wide gamut gen four slash five. The input gamma needs to be Blackmagic design film. The output color space is what we're gonna be seeing in our timeline. So that will be DaVinci wide gamut and same with our output gamma. Now I'm gonna create a few nodes and on the last node, I'm gonna add another color space transform and I'm going to take the color space from our timeline, which is DaVinci wide gamut and DaVinci intermediate. And I'm going to select the output color space to be Rec 709 and the output gamma is going to be sRGB. So with our two CSTs, I'm gonna label all these real quick. I've created my primary adjustments, white balance, exposure, contrast, and saturation. We're gonna be doing all of our adjustments in between the color space transforms. I'm gonna click on our scopes and look at our waveform. And the first thing I wanna do is just kind of bring the image up using the offset wheels and the primary color wheels. I'm gonna bring it up to about right there. Then I'm gonna add a bit of contrast. I'm gonna turn this up until I'm happy with it. I'm also gonna turn the pivot down to 332, which is I think middle gray for DaVinci White Gamut. And then for the white balance, obviously you can select something that's white in the shot. I'm gonna select my shorts and that really warms up the image. Now, as far as the saturation levels look, they look pretty good. Like I said, in the first CST, if you want to change the Blackmagic Design Film Gen, Selecting different ones will choose different saturation levels. Even film gen one looks really good, but I'm gonna change it back just to the wide gamut. Next, what I'm going to do is use a creative look. Now, what I've downloaded, which is for free, Colin Kelly actually designed this LUT. It's a 2383 film emulation LUT that you can use in the DaVinci wide gamut color space. Create a new node, right click on that, and select add node, and then select add parallel. I'm gonna rename this one luminance and I'm going to rename this one color and you guys will see why. So once you've downloaded his LUT, you can right click, select LUT and come up here to CKC and then select the DaVinci wide gamut to DaVinci wide gamut. Do the same thing on the lower node. Select the LUTs, come up to CKC and add DaVinci wide gamut to DaVinci wide gamut. So here's the trick with this. This is what's really cool is you can change the composite modes of each of these nodes with the same LUT on it. So we're gonna separate these up. So right click on the luminance node and select composite mode and then select luminosity. On the color node, right click on it, come down to composite mode and select color. And if you wanna change the contrast, you adjust the key of the luminosity. So you can turn this down like that or turn it back up to one. You have full control over the color and the luminosity of his 2383 look. Now looking at the scopes, we might have to make some exposure adjustments so we could just bring up the shadows a little bit. Come over here to the contrast node and increase the contrast. And as you can see, we're making all of these adjustments under the creative look LUT. You always wanna do that. Okay, so now to why I actually use DaVinci Resolve to color grade photos to do something that you can't do in Photoshop or Lightroom. Now in the free version, this is totally possible and I will show you a little bit more of a complicated way that will be in the studio version. So something that you can do is add a node on the very last node and this is just to check for reference. You never wanna make any adjustments after your final CST. But here with this node, what we're gonna do is select the power window and select any power window will work, but I'm going to zoom in and I'm only gonna select with no feather, just my skin on my face and a little bit of my chest. I'm gonna pull down the offset all the way until it's basically black. And then I'm going to invert it. And we can see where our skin tones are sitting on the waveform, but more importantly, on the vector scope. Now, if you want, you can go to the settings and turn on two times zoom to see where our skin tones are sitting. Now, as it looks right now, it looks really good, but your skin tones may be sitting on the left or the right hand side of this line. 
And if you don't have the line, come back to your adjustments and turn on show skin tone indicator. So if your skin tones are sitting on the left or right of that line, what you can do is create a new node before your look LUTs. And this one was labeled saturation. I never touched saturation, so I'll just name this skin. And what you can do is either with the color warper or a color slicer, or even the hue versus hue, which is really simple. I'll use the hue versus hue right now, but you can click on this little spline indicator and it will create this little eyedropper and select the skin. Now, what you can do is pull the skin down and make it more yellow or push it up and make it more magenta. Now, this is a very simple global adjustment. So if I wanna pull this down, I can come back to this last node, turn it on and see where my skin tones are. So for example, if this is where they were starting out, I would come back to the skin, move this back up, and see where this is sitting on the skin tone indicator line. And that's something you cannot do in Lightroom or Photoshop. All right, now let's get a little bit more advanced. There's a free DCTL, which is basically a tool that people can create that you can use in your color grading process. Carr Hendrickson has created a free DCL pack. I'll link it down in the description. And this is going to allow you to basically check your skin tones, the exposure, all of the juicy things to make sure your color grade and your images look good. And you can not only use this on photos, but definitely on video as well, as you guys know. So what you guys can do is come over here to the left-hand side, select LUTs, and then right-click on LUTs and select Reveal in Finder. Create a new folder, and I labeled it KHDCTL. Double-click on that folder and drag in all of the DCTLs that he included in his bundle pack, then exit out. And usually for DCTLs, you're going to need to restart DaVinci Resolve, so please do so now. Then, once you've installed them, click on the KHDCTLs and you will see all of these available to use in your node tree. So I'm going to create a new node before my last CST. With the new node created, come up here to the effects, select DCTL, and drag the DCTL onto the node. Then, with the DCTL list, click on the dropdown and you can select exposure, checkers, exposure chart, I'm going to select checkers. Now you can select false color, skin checker, white balance checker, and check this out. So if I select skin checker, you will see that some of this is too red, some of this is too yellow, but the skin for the most part looks good. But if you wanna make an adjustment to make sure that the skin tones look good, and you wanna make sure they're not too red or too yellow, what you can do with this node here that we created before is get rid of that previous adjustment, we can just right click and select reset node grade. And you can see now just by default that a majority of this actually looked good and using the skin tone indicator line on the vector scope was not as accurate as we thought. My legs are a little too yellow and there really isn't too much on my face that's too red, but for the most part, most of this looks accurate according to his DCTL. Now, if we wanted to make some fine adjustments, what we could do is come down to the leg here using the hue versus hue, click somewhere where it's green. With the point that it creates, we can pull this up a little bit, but then it starts to bring in a little bit of too red here in the chest, but there's a good trade-off. The legs are a little bit more accurate. The skin looks better with just that tiny adjustment. So now if we turn off this, we leave this on, off, on, off, it looks much better. Now let's quickly hop into a video where you may wanna edit some photos. Okay, so here we have the video and import a photo like I just did and do exactly the same workflow. That will totally work, except you have to do one thing. If you come over here to the color page, on your CST out, you have to make sure that your color space transform is not sRGB, but Rec. 709 2.4. And that's because your output color space is Rec. 709 2.4. Now to getting the photo delivered or exported. In the color tab, what you can do with the stills gallery selected, you can right click on the frame and grab a still. Now come back to your gallery and right click on that still and then come down to where it says export. Pick the folder that you want to export to. I'm going to select JPEG just because this is gonna be the final upload and then select export. 
This is the full export, and this is side by side with the actual viewing window of my timeline. And by the way, if you guys were wondering how to do that with multiple shots, you can generate all your stills. There's a couple ways to do this, but you can just hold down Command or Alt on your keyboard and select all the stills that you want to export, right click, and then do the same exact thing. Export, select how you want to export them and where you want to, and then select export. By the way, check out my online store for all your DaVinci Resolve needs like transitions, LUTs, sound effects, and awesome plugins. And thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments, please comment down below and I will see you guys in my next video.